Ah, welcome back my gardening friends. We're on plot one and it's the end of March uh, allotment tours and progress and there you can see quite a few of the fixtures and fittings from uh, the guttering. I had to empty that out to try and sort out the guttering on the uh, compost bin so I need to get that uh, tidy. It's a bit of a dumping ground is plot one hope Mrs K doesn't come round and uh, all the uh, bags of leaves have now been emptied and uh, all 20 one ton bags are now in the uh, the bins and they are settling down nicely whether 20 odd bags I collected 22 uh, two bags went in the no dig raise beds and this is now slowly going down this is what we collected in uh, 2018 and that'll go through my trommel before the autumn fall this year and i've got to sort out all this i've got new buckets to swap everything into put some yellow labels on them but I do need to get uh, this tidied up and I found uh, another four pots of the cannabis uh, compost and uh, again this has got lots of uh, perlite in and I'll be able to add that to my uh, homemade uh, compost if you go to my playlist under homemade liquid plant foods and compost mixes you can see how I do it there uh, in the middle there that's my uh, big sheet I'll lay that out and I'll add all my ingredients uh, to it and they're all free. So this is the greenhouse on plot one and uh, the water system is now all on and the compost that I mix up will fill these bags and it looks like I've got the float set just right and uh, there's no leaks and the drum has only gone down a little bit and I've taken the advice from several people as you can see it's just started to go green so this thick plastic we originally used on the compost runoff bin the first compost runoff bin I'll cut that into strips and that's what I've been using uh, under the new raised beds as well to keep uh, the moisture from the uh, the posts the onions and Oh, it'll come to me in a minute. No, it won't. You know what they are anyway. Are uh, doing well in here. Asparagus. And this is the where I got them from originally. I've just got to get those few weeds out. There's no signs of any asparagus yet. It's far too cold. But... Uh, that was a volunteer whether it come from some bird poo or that's where the previous pot holder had is asparagus i don't know but uh, i'm hoping one day to have um, a dedicated bed for the asparagus on plot three from our new viewers uh, that's the banana concentrate that's just banana skins in a bucket the compost runoff bin manure runoff uh, coffee grounds comfrey nettles uh, perennial weeds spelt with an I and uh, the rainwater still haven't changed that label so this is where all the uh, annual weeds go and you can see there I've put some more in and uh, they just rot down and uh, I can use the water out of that and one of these will be for the comfrey and one will be for nettles I'm not going to be collecting any nettles this year because I've got far too much liquid plant food to use that I can uh, actually get rid of and this is from the filters from my pond at home and that goes onto the leaves or my potatoes I find it does them a, a world of good so we've got the fruit trees now and I think this is a plum so hopefully we won't get no more frosts we probably will and I've had to protect this one the wind has been really strong today it's the 29th of March 
and the pollinators have been in here uh, but this is uh, really uh, blew off so I'll make sure this is wrapped up nicely just to protect some of them hopefully we'll get more than we did last year now they're establishing the soles there are the pallets uh, for the um, sacrificial boards on the new raised beds got to denail those and there we have some wood chips drying out I'll be sifting those uh, that, uh, and I'll do a 50-50 mix with uh, my leaf mould and I'll be using that mix uh, for the beans and that's my uh, manure runoff liquid there there is a barrel missing and it's all I'll put two 250 litres or so on all the fruit raspberry canes and I've also used the uh, log ashes the potash so they've had a potash and an oxygen feed just before just as they start to uh, develop and hopefully that will work and uh, that is my uh, manure runoff bin I've got two of them and the liquid comes out the bottom into a container uh, and it's in a half uh, an IBS I need to get this area sorted now and what I'm going to do I'm not going to throw none of this away because the restrictions at the moment I'm just going to gather all this up and stack it on top of this little wildlife area and uh, any bugs that are in the uh, end of any of the stems can stay there till they're happy to come out we've had a little tidy up here and uh, we'll have a little look at those uh, new fruit bushes we planted and at the moment uh, it looks like uh, they're all doing okay this is uh, a changed area because of the vine weevil in the strawberries and they've been attacking my carrots so we've uh, we've changed it to, to fruit and there's some uh, fruit bushes there for one of my friends uh, they can't pick them up at the moment for obvious reasons but nothing hurting they'll develop their roots nicely ready for planting maybe in the autumn nearly all the scaffold planks have gone now because we've built what we've built so just need a, a tidy up this is uh, the new manure runoff bin I'll put some hay and manure there ready to top up it's all lined and that uh, produces uh, a nice liquid uh, to use on the allotment let's pop around the other side and this is all the manure concentrate uh, this in the barrel had an ingress of uh, rainwater uh, I've had that much I've had to just put it on everything including the rhubarb but this will be better it'll go into a 200 litre drum and uh, I've just got to get these uh, covered using uh, those uh, polycarbonate sheets that we've got uh, this is something new I was getting a little bit fed up of all these leaves overhanging and making it difficult to manoeuvre around the plot especially here when I was trying to get the uh, harvest the uh, raspberries and uh, these uh, canes now have just started to come alive so that's when I add my nitrogen feed which this year would, is uh, the manure last year I used nettle so it'll be interesting to see how they've done and the blackberries are coming to life and they've also had plenty of uh, potash etc that's the experiment not sure whether they're autumn or summer so I've left a few shoots uh, along here this time to see what to happens and I've got to decide what I'm doing with these uh, I'm thinking about cutting these into segments so I can put them around my cabbages the giant cabbages to keep the leaves off the ground and help uh, with the uh, slugger issues so I need to sort out what I've got to do with them but the trouble is at the moment uh, the waste disposal tips are also shut because of the uh, uh, virus that's about and this will be my 
uh, grass clippings container. This used to be me, the banana concentrate. It was just too big and uh, hopefully the, net, uh, the grass cutting juices will come out the bottom. I'll be able to use those as well as a nitrogen feed. So we leave pl plot one and we move on to plot three. I've moved all the wood chips out of here now so it looks a little bit more uh, respectable and uh, really impressed with the uh, blueberries uh, this year. They've had their Acacia compost mulch and then we've just wood chipped uh, everything else. These are the white currants that I didn't really know that I'd got and I took two cuttings, just ordinary stem cuttings and uh, it looks like they're both took at the moment but don't be fooled guys there's enough sap in the stems to keep them alive for a short while so don't be tempted to touch them until they're well established and hopefully I'll be able to take them up maybe uh, in 12 months time and move to a new location these are the black currants that I took from seed uh, well should we say not took from seed the seeds fell on the floor and I've took the ones that had sprouted and they were potted on and uh, they're doing fine and there's one at the far end and I use these slabs there just so I can walk along but everything's uh, greening up nicely a lot of gooseberries more blueberries there and uh, some red currants I've uh, removed some of the black currants that weren't doing well and I'll put gooseberries back in their place well that's what I think they are I have been known to make a mistake and the red currant that didn't produce for two years that's also uh, been replaced and right in the middle of the screen you might just see a little bit of greenery and they've took I've got some repairs to do and I can't blame the birds I dropped a curb on it but this is about the time or in a few months time to make sure uh, it is hole free we don't want to trap the birds in there uh, square foot gardening beds uh, I've repurposed those roof sheets this was a little bit short so this will do for now uh, until I find uh, something else but if you haven't seen those before uh, why not pop and have a look at the uh, square foot gardening bed I just need to water that because I will be wanting to pop this pop those up this is the uh, vertical gardening I've still got to get some more cross members in but remember this uh, material these straps single-use straps well I was thinking about using that I'm going to use black buckets so basically they'll be sitting on there obviously with a, a cross member on uh, with a strap top and bottom so I can just drop it into the straps because the handles on these buckets are not the best these buckets are single-use buckets and uh, we cut holes in the bottom to leave a sump uh, I did read on the kale that I could have actually took the tops out and that would have produced the side shoots but as you can see the pigeons have been having a whale of a time but because they were going to seed I've left them and uh, they'll be coming out soon we don't get club root with this variety so that'll be nice and safe to uh, remove and then I'll be able to put an extra three uh, underground worm farms in if you haven't seen these before then pop back and uh, have a look I'll try and drop a card in if I can YouTube keeps changing the way uh, these things uh, you do these things I learn one way and then they uh, they change it all around and as you can see maybe there the worms are quite active in here now and all the other creatures and with a no dig raised bed you've got to keep those worms happy so that's how I feed them so the original intentions was to have uh, four beds at the uh, back four beds at the front 
uh, with the smaller beds here which we uh, changed to square foot gardening and coal frames uh, the vertical gardening there and uh, this bed here should be the same as here but as you can see now I've cleared all that soil up we rotated it in a previous video and uh, if you look at this bed <laughs> compared to that we would have never have got all that soil in there some of the soil has come from that area there when we dug out for the compost bins so at least all the rough soil has been now rotivated and uh, in this station so in a few years time or whenever I get a chance get some more planks this bed will be here and hopefully we'll have used some more of this soil so uh, in the near future I've got to set up my pipe system from the storage tanks up there to come down here so we can top these up and uh, the same over there there'll be four in that corner uh, the poor onions uh, they're not doing very well these are the giants these are the ones that were given to me they've already they were used to being outside uh, whether these will recover or not I don't know they've uh, they've got plenty of green shoots coming out the middle I might just need to tidy them up but I will be treating all these with uh, neem oil very soon I'll keep saying that it'll catch me out uh, these are this is the parsnip um, bed which has uh, already been prepared and uh, we did go four by uh, six on there and then we move on to the carrots which uh, I think there's 40 uh, there'll be 40 carrots in there not worried about for showing but it's just nice to grow some nice carrots and then uh, we'll do the same uh, with those all the way along there I'll show you something as well that I've done shortly one of uh, February's and January's job was to remove all these slabs so that uh, I could put these uh, plastic boards in um, they must be from some sort of treatment at one of the factories uh, they were bought here many many years ago and people are still using them good strong boards and they're ideal to put uh, against there uh, so the wood chips uh, I needed to get this job done uh, I wanted to mainly show you the reason why um, I've done this I whiz past it haven't I so as I've been digging uh, I've been taking out all the buying weed my intentions are to leave this open this year so that uh, we can uh, get the buying weed as it comes as you see they've been trapped under the slabs and they bench it here and they do get into the polytunnel so I need to stop it now and as you can see there they'll start sprouting and we can take them out uh, it, it, this green ass is new on um, my neighbour's plot uh, but the buying weed, the buying weed was all on, on amongst the rhubarb and it gets in all up around the tanks I'm not worried about it being up here but definitely don't want it in the polytunnel another dumping ground oh dear gonna have to sort out soon all the uh, polytunnel repairs that we've done over the last five years have held up well but this will be coming off uh, over the winter towards the end and we'll be uh, raising this polytunnel up by a meter the guttering will re then reverse and the water will fall this way into pots there at the moment the collections at this end but it seems a bit pointless when i've already got this water here so i'm going to reverse it it'll save me transporting some of the water so what i normally do is uh, set all these out put a dibber hole in then move them out so what i've done this time <coughs> is uh, <coughs> done it once all I've got to do now is put my dibber in mark where it's got to go and uh, hopefully these are still there ready to to do trying to prioritize jobs at the moment just in case we get a complete lockdown which is uh, always possible here in the UK these pallets here are for my long roots they're going to be up there uh, and, and staggered so I can get me guttering down uh, it is a, a job I need to do but we'll talk about that in uh, April the uh, giant red cabbages 
uh, are going to seed nicely now and the uh, broad beans uh, have kicked off again this is some of the material the sieve material from out of the polytunnel surplus i will need it for when i extend uh, all these boxes the beans are in the way at the minute but that's uh, doing quite well i created this wildlife area when i first took the plot on and uh, you may be able to see lots of bits of plastic uh, I tried to line it so it was deeper but all that is is like a water feature where the water's stored before it's pumped into a, a fountain uh, I need to change that because it's quite close to there and it just happened that I uh, found that uh, somebody on the allotment site uh, put it out uh, it's got an overflow it isn't leaking so that will get a nice wash and uh, we'll revamp this around the uh, long roots these are the last year's autumn raspberry canes that we cut uh, and dried hopefully i'll be able to use them for my peas but because there's uh, minimal access for seeds etc uh, i'm not sure uh, how many i'm going to be putting in I put cardboard on top of these after watering you can see it's curled the cardboard but it stays reasonably dry compared with that which has uh, gone dry more potatoes the dahlias I've uh, watered those to try and bring them to life and it won't be long before I'm taking a scoop I sliced the cucumbers up and put these in in the autumn hopefully the mice haven't had them and we'll see if they uh, germinate uh, i've got all the now i've got these spare scaffold planks this is where all my beans and peas will be going this is how i do the peas in guttering um, very rarely the mice get to them in there uh, this has all been i've took out the top layer let's go down here you can see if i'll show you it's easier for me to explain so the carrots that we grew last year uh, sweet candle uh, over the winter i mulched them with this we know we've got vine weevil in there so I, none of this material has gone in any other it's staying there they'll eventually disappear uh, some pallet collars and some more of that wood i bought some of these trays that i'll do a quick review on once uh, I've seen how they do, they're the same as the leaf grabbers, and I'll use this cardboard to cut, cut circles out. Uh, once I've got them, uh, they'll last uh, me a few years. But uh, it took me a few hours just to get the uh, polytunnel all tidy there, but I'm happy with that. And this is the uh, material that we use to insulate those carrots that could have vine weevils in so that's going on the wildflower garden the birds can scrap that out and uh, eat any grubs they find or moths leeks again we've got to get the neem oil on those these are the garlic rounds the ones that didn't split last year that i had from mike herdis these are the ones that did split i didn't eat any i've re reused them all to build up my stocks and these are the William Coleman Red Russian Garlic. Give them a spray as well. So those are the leeks pips from a seed head. And they're the same as the leeks down there. So you can see by splitting them up, putting them into their own holes, uh, how much better they grow. They're my reserves and I will be using them. And these are the little baubles that you get on the bottom of the garlic bulb they're in there potted them straight up these are the overwintering potato challenge from allotmental nothing showing on them and this is uh, my compost storage bins really pleased with those so this is some of the spent compost that the cannabis growers uh, unscrupulously dump this is the potato compost so this is last year's compost mix i'll be doing a fresh lot but some of this will be added to it 
and this is the remaining leaf mold which is one of the ingredients I said I was going to have two barrels to the left but we didn't but it just happens that this barrel here just go sits into that corner so that's nice Jerusalem artichokes they're in there and this is the permanent celery bed we put a pond liner in the bottom you can see uh, the explanation of what it looks like before the saw went in on the um, sacrificial boards video and uh, no it isn't somebody uh, up periscope uh, that's how I'm going to water straight into there right down to the bottom hopefully I'll keep it uh, reasonably damp we'll see see how we go we've got another bed there so eventually we'll put another one of these there and one that way give me more room to come around that corner and then we can extend these two beds that one by one this one by two or three depending on whether I've got enough pallet collars by that time and for anybody that's been watching me for quite a while last six months I've been dying to get these slabs in and it's dry enough to do I've just got one more three by two to get into there and uh, this will all be done I was uh, I wanted to get it done today but I just haven't had time and with the restrictions on travel and times I've got to be careful so I've still got uh, some of this left and I'm still struggling to say it but uh, Angie uh, Eccles said celery yak then uh, Gordon he said celery yak I thought that ain't bad and then Digwell said, sell Heriac. So who's the winner, Angie, Gordon or Digwell Greenfingers? So in a previous video, we've put these sacrificial boards on. They have got a gap and these have got the washers and um, Babette uh, in the garden, or is in the garden, said, why not use uh, bottle tops? Well, I've got loads of fruit juice uh, bottles tops and I've used those and they've done a real good job obviously I'm not going to worry about this but uh, you can see it more there and uh, I've left these out to remind me and I nearly forgot but they're just the juice uh, juice bottles that uh, I use uh, to stop me poking my eyes out on the sticks and uh, so easy to use the screw just goes straight through them and then I can fasten it on so why not pop across and see uh, Babette it's Babette uh, is in the garden or something very similar so one of my last videos I accidentally touched the screen and set it off while I was trying to climb back down through the holly bush that's my solar panel and the bug hotel and we looked across at the allotment and I am chuffed to bits with the work that I've put in in the last uh, six months. If, you're, if you like the content of this video, please consider subscribing. Don't forget that like button. Don't forget to check out all the comments, add to the comments. And it's all about interaction and I'm struggling to watch other people's videos because everybody is binge watching my videos so I'm having to reply to comments more than watching videos so I apologise to my fellow creators for that happy gardening to you all till next time my friends ta for now